today we are going to see limit state method of design for RCC structure as per as 4.5.6.2000 Introduction of the limit state method Limit state method are the acceptable limits for the safety and serviceability requirements of the structure before failure occur. This is comprehensive method which takes care of the structure not only for its safety but its fitness throughout the period of the service of the structure. So here are various limit states. So first limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability. In limit state of collapse we are going to always design the section for flexure is nothing but the bending, shear, torsion and compression and limit state of serviceability means here we are going to design the section for the deflection and the cracking. Partial safety factor nothing is important of safety in civil engineering structures and uncertainties involved in analysis, design, construction practices and material qualities appropriate factor of safety in the design is required hence design load and a design strength of material are not same as characteristic load and the strength means if you are going to consider the characteristic strength of concrete is m50 m20 m25 like that and the strength is strength of the material yeah so if you are going to use a mild steel fe250 fe405 and fe500 so here the design strength of the material are not same as the characteristic load here. So IS456-2000 specifies the separate partial safety factor for the loads and strength of the materials. So partial safety factors for the loads. So gamma here. So table 18 of IS456 say that. So following are the various load combinations. And for the load combination, in limit state of collapse and in limit state of serviceability, you are going to use a different partial safety factor for loads. When there is a combination of dead load and imposed load, in that case in limit state of collapse, we are going to use the partial safety factor for dead load is 1.5 and for imposed load 1.5 and limit state of serviceability, that factor of safety is 1 for dead load and 1 for imposed load. Similar way, if you are going to see the other combination dead load plus wind load or earthquake load, in that case we are going to consider the dead load 1.5 or 0.9. So 0.9 here and these we are going to use when you are going to take the check of sliding overturning like uh, in condition of the dams and returning holes. in that case you are going to consider this value as a 0.9 okay and wind load here again the partial safety factor for wind load in limit state of collapse is 1.5 and in limit state of serviceability it is one for dead load and one for wind load so dead load imposed load and wind load combination or instead of wind load if there is an earthquake load so partial safety factor for limit state of collapse is 1.2 for dead load imposed load and wind load and one for, for limit state of serviceability it is one and for imposed load and wind load it is 0.8 and 0.8 so this is partial safety factor partial safety factor for loads and these are the combinations in the factor of safety given for the limit of collapse and serviceability similar way we are going to use a partial safety factor for material also okay so clause 36.4.2 in is 456-2000 so here they have given the various partial safety factor material when we are going to use a concrete in a collapse state we are going to divide the whatever the strength of concrete by 1.5 we are going to reduce the strength of concrete by 1 point by dividing the partial safety factor 1.5 and similarly for steel partial safety factor for material 1.15 and for deflection for both concrete and steel we are going to use partial safety factor for material 1 so before going to see what are the partial safety factor what is the characteristic strength of concrete in the states of steel we are going to consider how much value you are going to get for the design we are going to see idealized stress strain curve for the concrete because the material which we are going to use 
for design of the various cross sections basically we are going to use the concrete and steel so what is actual behavior of the concrete okay so for that we are going to see the stress strain graph of the concrete so here the graph is plot again strain versus stress in concrete when you are going to start first to see the strain the strain is going to vary from 0 to point not not to in a parabolic curve and after when strain reaches to point not not to from point not not to to maximum strain 0 0.005 the stress the stress is a constant okay when strain from 0 to point not not to the stress is a parabolic and when we are going to see from strain 0 0.002 here strain is increasing okay but stress is a constant okay after strain 0 0.002 okay and here see here epsic is a characteristic strength of concrete but as per as 456 we are going to consider the 0.67 epsic strength only because on site various batches uh, when you are going to mix the concrete water cement proper there is not proper water cement ratio so that's your 0.67 epsic strength of concrete we are going to consider and for that we are going to use a partial safety factor for material so 0.67 epsic divided by gamma m and gamma m already you know we are going to consider 1.5 so here 0.67 epsic divided by 1.5 so that value will be 0.45 epsic and that value you are going to consider for the design similar way idealized stress turn curve for the mild steel there are two types of steel mild steel is generally having the grade if 250 and another is a tor steel tor steel or deformed bars if you form and 500 so here if you are going to plot the graph of mild steel here strain versus stress here from zero to here at this point if you are going to consider the maximum stress is EFY when you are going to use a partial safety factor for material and partial safety factor for steel here we are going to consider the 1.15 and when you are going to divide this total yield stress 1.15 that value will be 0.87 FY so always when we are going to go design in that design we are going to consider the value 0.87 FY so this is idealized stress turn curve for the deform bar the difference between the mild steel and the deform bar is in mild steel we are going to get the definite point okay here definite point we are going to get but here when you are going to when you are going to see the deform bar graph here we are not going to get the specific point okay specific point we are not going to get here so here you are going to get the curve similar way here the total strength is here fy we are going to use partial safety factor for material for steel 1.15 we are going to get the total stress 0.87 fy but when you are going to use the deform bars in that case you are going to calculate the strain at various levels means what should be the strain at fy what should be the strain of 0 0.975 for you 0 0.95 you 0 0.9.85 and point for 85 and point 8 fy so for this various string things we are going to calculate the various strain also and here if you if you can see that the maximum stress here maximum stress of steel is fy and if you are going to draw the line parallel to this so here the proof strength or reserve strength point not not two percent okay so point not not two percent reserve strength of steel you are going to consider because of this parabolic shape here we don't have any specific yield point but in my steel we have the definite yield point so that's why there is a no levels like we have seen in a deformed steel bar. next based upon that how we are going to calculate the flexural strength of the rc section as you people know longitudinal steel main steel to be provided in the beam depend upon the bending moment so based upon bending moment we are going to provide the longitudinal steel if steel is provided only on tension side in the beam section it is called as a singly reinforced beam means in beam if you are going to provide the steel only in tension side tension face that beam is called a singly reinforced beam and when the steel is provided on the both tension and compression side it is called as a doubly reinforced beam and we later on we are going to see how we are going to calculate the strength of singly reinforced beam and doubly reinforced beam now we are going to see limit state of collapse flexure 
so what are the various assumptions already we have seen there are limit state various limit state limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability and in limit state of collapse we are going to see first what is flexure flexure is nothing but a bending and various assumptions given in is 456 to design the section by using the limit state method so first assumption is plane section normal to the axis remain plane after the bending second the maximum strain in a concrete at outermost compression fiber is taken as 0.0035 in bending so whatever the compression fiber uh, com maximum strain in the concrete at outermost fiber you are going to consider 0.0035 in bending the stress strain curve of concrete ha is having parabolic shape up to 0.05 strain and then constant up to limit state of 0 0.0035 so earlier we have seen the graph see here this graph is saying that the strain at 0.002 it is varying and after strain 0.002 to 0035 it is constant see here the stress strain curve of concrete is having parabolic shake up to 0 0.002 strain and then constant up to limit state of 0.005 for design purpose compressive strength of concrete may be assumed to be 0.67 times of the characteristic step which is given as 4 by 6 in addition to this the partial safety factor gamma n may be taken as 1.5 so next assumption the tensile strength of the concrete is ignored and next the stresses in reinforcement are derived from respective stress strain curve for the type of steel used for the design purpose the partial safety factor gamma n equal to 1.15 shall be applied the maximum stress in the steel is limited to fi divided by 1.15 which is partial safety factor for steel so the maximum stress here we are going to use 0.87 fi and the maximum strength in steel if you want to calculate for that we are going to use formula 0.87 fy divided by modulus of elasticity of steel plus 0.00t 002 why we are going to consider this 0.002 here in this graph deformed steel bar when we are going to consider the maximum stress fy and when you are going to divide the fy 1.15 at this point here the reserve strength reserve strength or reserve proof stress is 0 0.002 so that's why in this formula we are going to consider 0 0.002 if if, if you want to calculate strain at the level at 0.9 here so 0.9 into 0 0.87 fy divided by es plus 0.003 value you have to consider it okay like this we are going to calculate the maximum strain in the steel at a various level also we can get the strain in the steel here es is modulus of elasticity of steel so important thing here before going to uh, derive the formulas or to get the pleasure strength of the section people should know what is stress block parameters okay so suppose if i have taken here the cross section of the beam which having the width b and effective depth is a small d effective depth is the distance measured from top compression fiber of the beam to the center of the reinforcement provided in a tension face so that distance is called as a small d okay and if you are going to draw the strain diagram and stress diagram for this cross this cross section of the beam so here first the strain diagram we can draw the strain diagram or stress, di stress diagram into any shape here we are going to choose the to show the strain diagram we are going to consider the rectangular uh, 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 sorry triangular sections so here as per assumption okay on the assumption which we have seen here see the maximum strain in a concrete at the outermost compression fiber is taken 0.005 in a bending so maximum strain here at concrete at compression phase is 0.005 and the maximum strain in steel 0.87 fy es 0.002 see here this assumption so based upon the assumptions we have considered these two values for the cross section of the beam and when we are going to consider the stress diagram so maximum stress here for this concrete okay so maximum stress of concrete already we have seen here 0.67 times fck divided by 1.5 so that value will be 0.446 efck and the strain in the maximum strain maximum stress in the steel already we have seen that value total fy divided by 1.15 that is 0.87 fy so here 0.87 fy is the force 
we are going to get so here we are going to calculate now compression force compression force due to this stress block this this is called as a stress block and in this stress block we are going to calculate two things okay this compression force total compression force due to this stress block and distance of that force from the top compression fiber okay the beam so how we are going to get the two values that we are going to see here so the diagram showing the distribution of the compressive stress in a concrete across the depth x u max of the section in turn as a stress block so here here we can see this is neutral axis the axis which is going to divide the two separate zone means compression zone and tension zone that axis is called as a neutral axis and the x u x u is a distance measured from top compression fiber of the beam to the neutral axis that we are going to consider as always x u and here is the steel ast and small defective depth of the beam and here we are going to consider ecu that maximum strain in a concrete so the strain always you are going to be some 0.0035 and maximum strain maximum strain in steel we are going to consider 0.87 fy divided by es plus 0.002 okay so now based upon and already we have seen the strain diagram so strain diagram already we know and this is stress diagram here and in stress diagram the maximum stress already we have seen that is 0 0.0.446 okay and the, we are going to calculate this cu force and the distance of this uh, compression force from top compression fiber so here you can see here from neutral axis here from neutral axis when you are going to consider the compression stress here so compression stress and neutral axis is zero and when we are going to move towards the top compression fiber here the stress is going to increase and stress the, is parabolic up to the strain 0 0.002 okay so like we have seen here see the strain here stress is going to increase when strain is going to increase so stress is a parabolic shape when strain, strain reaches up to 0.002 when from 0.002 to 0.003 stress is a constant so same thing where we are showing here that when stress start from 0 point so from 0 to 0.002 strain here the stress is a parabolic here and the moment the strain reaches to 0 0.002 to the maximum strain in the concrete point 0, 0 0.0035 the stress is a constant okay and the maximum stress in the concrete already we are seeing 0.67 yep ck divided by 1.5 so that value will be 0.446 fck okay so after this already we people know that at point 0.002 when there is a strain so at this point up to this the stress is a parabolic now we are going to calculate the distance at in this stress ball of this stress block we are going to divide one parabola and one rectangular so we are going we are interested to find out what is depth of this rectangle and what is depth of this parabola so for that we are going to use a similar triangle rule here so this value you know this value you know so we are going to consider the similar triangle rule and from similar triangle rule you are going to get this value as a 0.43 x and 0.57 epsk so you see so these two one two values we are going to find out the stress block and the distance so area of stress block how we are going to calculate so referring to the figure let be the distance from neutral axis up to which the stress diagram is a parabolic from the similar triangles so from similar triangle rule we are going to get a distance is 0.57 x u so here we can see here so this distance a from similar triangle rule we have got 57 x u and how you got by using this by uh, by calculating the a value by using similar triangle rule and how you are going to get the area of stress block then if this value is 0.57 x u this total x u so remaining is point 43 x so how you are going to calculate the area of stress block now so if area of stress block if you are going to calculate so first we are going to consider the area of rectangle and then area of the parabola so if you are going to see the area of rectangles maximum stress here 0.446 fck and the depth here x u minus a okay x u minus a you are going to get this thing and plus parabola so parabola area 2 by 2 base into height so 2 by 3 base here base is a small a into height 
0.446 is the stress and height is a 0.57 okay that is small a if you are going to add this you are going to get the compression force 0.36 fck b into xu and this, this diagram from is4 physics here you can see the distance if this is xu the compression force in a stress block is 0.36 fck into xu and distance the distance we are going to calculate from top component top compression fiber is 0.42 xu so after getting this force 0.36 fck b and after getting this 0.36 fck xu we are going to multiply it along the width okay so width of this beam so here that is a b so we are going to multiply this with the b so we are going to get the compression force total 0.36 fck b into xu and depth of compression force now what is the distance how you are going to calculate the distance so from extreme fiber in the compression the force cu will act at the cg of the concrete stress diagram so at cg of this stress block diagram so referring to figure the f is equal to maximum stress here 0.446 fck then the cg from the topmost fiber will be given by so if you are going to calculate cg from topmost compression fiber the, we are going to get the value 0.416 xu so uh, to next in digit if you are going to consider the larger value 0.5 this value is 0.42 xu cu is situated at 0.416 xu below the compression edge so these are the two parameters in stress block first is the compression force and the distance depth of the compression force cu and how you are going to calculate the xu if you are going to consider the equilibrium in the forces if you are if you are going to consider the equilibrium in this so what should you have to do the cu is equal to tu then section will be in equilibrium so if you are going to compare the two forces xu is equal to the 0.87 fy is the force due to the tensile steel see see this so ast which you are going to provide it. if you are going to calculate the stress force here okay 0.87 fy okay is the stress and if you are going to consider multiply it with the ast you are going to get the force so tu is force and cu is force so, tu is equal to 0.87 fy into ast and cu already we have calculated 136 fck b into xu so if you want to get value of xu we are going to take this 0.36 fck b into this side we can calculate we can get the depth of neutral axis so limiting value of the depth of neutral axis so limiting value of xu for mild steel grade 1 the maximum strain in steel fy 1.15 the partial safety factor for material into modulus of elasticity of steel plus 0.002 if you are going to put the grade of steel to 50 here we can get the strain 0 0.003 at maximum strain in the steel from similar triangle in strain diagram in figure xu we are going to get value of xu as a 0.53d 53d similarly the limiting value or maximum value of xu for limiting grades fe4 and 500 can be worked out the values are given in table next table so here you can see here limiting values means maximum value xu max when you are going to put the maximum uh, area of strain in the steel the values which are going to got for various grade of steel fe 250 400 500 the value will be xu max 0.53 So these are the various values of grade of steel and the xu max when not we want to get the depth of neutral axis for a maximum or limiting value and this is maximum strength for the different type of a grade of steel next strength of rectangle section in a flexure how we are going to calculate the movement resisting capacity of the section or we can say you can say the strength of the rectangle section in a flexure so movement resisting how we are going to calculate the momentum string for the under reinforced section when xu is less than xu max or the pt is less than pt max the section is under reinforced section the strain in the steel at the time of limit state of collapse will be more than 0.87 fy divided by modulus of elasticity of steel plus 0 0.002 and the design strain the stress sorry in steel will be 0.87 fy so mu is here tu into z and z is here lever arm what is lever arm so for that we are going to see the stress block diagram so you see here 
the lever arm is when you are going to calculate the compression force and distance between the compression force and tension force this total distance we have considered the d small d and if you are going to minus that distance of compression force for the top compression fiber of the beam 0.416 so this z will be the lever arm and this lever arm value will be d minus 0.416 xu if you are going to multiply it if you want to calculate the moment at tu if you are going to consider moment at this section here we are going to consider the if you are going to, we are going to calculate the moment the force cu into lever arm and if you are, when you are going to consider the moment at c we are going to calculate the strength here force into distance that is moment so tu into lever arm so like this two way we can take the moment at force tu tension side and in compression side we are going to get the maximum moment carrying capacity of the section so here you can see this point m is equal to tu is a tension force into lever arm so that lever arm d minus 0.416 u so total mu is equal to 0.87 f by ast and this is lever arm d minus 0.416 xu under reinforced section next is the balance section okay so what what is mean by this under reinforced section balance section or reinforced section the under reinforced section the section in which first we are allowed to reach the steel stresses or steel strain to its ultimate limit okay and later the concrete due to this the failure in such of a cross in the sections is ductile failure okay means the steel is going to give the sign before failure because steel is a ductile material and concrete is a brittle material okay and in balance section we are going to allow to reach the tensile stresses and compression stresses of the concrete side to reach the simultaneously so here xu is equal to xu max the value of xu the depth of neutral axis here maximum and xu will same here but in under reinforced section the xu max is greater than xu and the section is a balanced one and at the time of a limit state of collapse strain in the concrete is 0.0035 and strain in the steel 0.87 fy es plus 0.002 so these are the two maximum stresses already we have seen this maximum sorry strength in concrete 0.0035 and strain in steel this the moment of resistance will be for maximum or the limiting so mu limit here cu into z so c is the compression force z is a lever arm 0.36 fck xu instead of here xu you are going to put the xu mass because we are going to consider the balance section and here balance section we are going to consider the stresses the strength to reach its maximum permissible limit and here is a lever arm so rearranging this so you are going to get the formula for mu limit is 0.36 fck xu max divided by d 1 minus 0.416 xu max divided by d b d square into fck and third one is the o reinforced section but in o reinforced section we allow first to reach the concrete strength to its permissible limit than the steel so in, the, in that case the concrete is going to fail first than the steel so that failure is a bitter failure and such type of design of section is not allowed so here we are going to consider only the section as a under reinforced section of the balance section and for that strength strength of the rectangular section in a flexure so strength is nothing but the moment carrying capacity of the section so for under reinforced section we are going to use this formula and for balance section we are going to use this formula strength of rectangular section in the flexure okay so limiting value of mu so already we have seen how you are going to calculate the value of mu here okay but when you are going to put the value of xu here xu as xu limit in that case we are going to get the mu limit mu limit means the maximum moment carrying capacity of the section okay when the neutral axis reach to its maximum limit or limiting value so for my still here if you are going to use the same formula okay which we have calculated here for balance section and here if you are going to put the value of x to max maximum value if you are going to put in that case and maximum value already we have calculated here see x to max for the various type of grade of steel so those values you are going to put in this formula if you are going to use 250 steel yeah if 250 in that case you are going to use x to max 0.53 d so here see 0.53 d we have put the value here okay and based upon that we are going to get, got the formula mv limit is equal to 0.419 fck d square to get the maximum moment carrying capacity of the section we required the fck okay material of uh, concrete we used then width of the beam and the effective depth of the beam 
okay for ready references the values of ml limit for be different still like here we have calculated the um, ml limit for the only uh, fe250 still you can calculate for fe405 and 500 only we are going to change the different values of xumax depend upon the gate of steel and we are going to get the various ml limit values so for fe405 0.13 fck vd square and for fe500 0.133 fck vd square next lecture actually we are based upon this we are going to start how we are going to design the singly reinforced section doubly reinforced section and the flange section today we are going to stop